Hi, my name is Jose Ogarin. I'm the Chief Innovation Officer at Altus. I've been a part of the DevNet community since 2014. I have been a networking engineer for the past 15 years and a software developer for the last seven. Uh, my main focus is to build software solutions on top of Cisco technologies and uh, so that I can impact my customers' day-to-day -day activities and their workflows. I've been a part of this community, again, since 2014, and I've seen how the community has always been very welcoming and very approachable. Even during the pandemic, you were always uh, able to actually reach out to the different uh, Cisco uh, DevNet evangelists, to the Cisco support staff. So it's a very, very um, inspiring thing for me to be here at the, I think, fourth DevNet Create, uh, which I, again, um, I'm very happy about it. It's been a tough year for everyone, obviously, with the pandemic, but it is glad that we're able to actually keep this community growing and keep this community going. The uh, inspiration for this talk is basically that we at Altus, the company that I work for, a Cisco partner based in Costa Rica, are in the process of actually getting our DevNet specialized um, certification or specialization for the company. As part of that process, we were given a challenge, a technical challenge with a technology that we weren't familiar with. And we had to solve uh, or solve that challenge to demonstrate our, our technical skills. But the main problem there is how do you actually solve something in a limited time without actually losing uh, the goal of having that user experience be the priority here. So that's one of the main things that we had to do during this challenge. Solve it, but as always, as we like to do in the company, having the user experience be a priority. In recent years, people have been investing more and more into user experience, which is uh, basically how do we get something to not only look good, but work the way that it should be, right? To make it easier for um, either customers, support staff, to interact easily with the tools, with the solutions that we are building. There's an actual story of uh, in 2013, where a Canadian company uh, invested 125 million on implementing a new uh, ERP for their staff so they could speed up how they uh, manage their procurement process, how they quoted new stuff, how they actually sold, in this case, cosmetics um, to some of their delegates or partners within Canada. Again, it was a 125 million um, project that they actually had to pull the plug because the user experience was so bad that they had a lot of resignations, a lot of uh, partners actually going to the competition because the whole process was uh, very difficult to work with. So uh, user experience, it's not something nice to have. In this digital age, it is something that you must have, right? Again, this is an example of something that happened in 2013, almost a decade ago, but it is even more relevant today. You have to invest in the user experience because that's what drives business. If you're not convinced, here's some other statistics of why customer experience slash user experience, which I know are not the same, but they intertwine um, completely because you can have a good customer experience without having a good user experience in your products. So these are some of the statistics statistics that talk about that whole uh, process. So the first one is that uh, in the US, 59% of customers walk after several bad experiences and 17% walk after just one bad experience with that brand. It doesn't even matter if they love the brand, if they were loyal to, to that brand. After several bad experiences, 59% of the states, 17% after just one bad experience. Globally, it's actually 32% that walk after one bad experience. So we can really um, 
question that we have to invest in experiences is the way to actually keep our um, customers happy and how we can retain them or keep their loyalty and keep their confidence. 80% of users actually say that speed and convenience are essential to customer experience. And I will say the same thing for enterprise applications. If you don't provide an experience where people are um, comfortable with, where they feel that they can do their task easily and they can do it at speed, you won't have them adopt your software, right? So you have to invest in customer or user experience to actually provide that speed and convenience that they need into, into, in their day-to-day tasks. 73% of uh, customers say that experience is key to the purchasing decision, only behind price and product quality. So it's a really high number. I mean, it's basically saying, hey, yeah, the price has to be right, obviously. The product has to be without box, but also experience has to be, the customer experience or the user experience has to be great with a product. Currently, with so many globalization, there are a lot of options in the markets to have different experiences. There's a lot of options in the market to buy software from US, from Latin America, from Europe, from Asia, from different parts in the US, from West Coast, East Coast, the Central States, whatever, right? So you have a lot of options right now in the market. So if you don't invest on actually, obviously price, obviously product quality, but again, 73% say that experience is key to the purchasing decision. If you don't invest on that, you'll have your customers going to other vendors and actually buying from them. And it's the same for internal projects. If you don't invest on the internal projects experience, you'll have your users trying to use some other tool, trying to keep their own ways of doing things. So it is key to that. And it's not only adoption, it's not only that um, customers will actually go for your solution. 43% of customers say they will pay more for convenience. So if your software is easy to use, if your software is convenient, if your software solves uh, things better for them, 43% of them will actually pay more for that convenience. So it actually goes to business. Not only that it helps and you get people actually to buy your software, but you can actually charge a little bit extra for it, a premium, if you know that your experience is better than what your competition has. 42% will pay more for a more friendly experience. Basically the same. If you invest in your experience, if you invest on your software, if you involve or actually get the customer experience or the user experience from the get-go, you'll have customers paying more because they feel your experience is more friendly to them and they'll feel more attracted to using your software. And one um, statistic that actually caught my attention was that this is coming from websites, not actually enterprise applications, but I think that it actually applies a lot to enterprise applications as well. 75% of people form judgment from a website based on the aesthetics. So basically when you go to a website, 75% of the people say they can trust your brand if they feel that your uh, the aesthetics of that website are good for them or are great or beautiful or are appealing, however you want to call it. So, and I think it's the same for enterprise applications. I will say that the number could be at around the same, um, same margin, which if you have a web application that is appealing to your users, to your customers, they will trust more on, on your brand. They'll feel that you invested in them because you invested in their experience. Not only that you come up with a solution, but you actually made an effort to um, solve that. So that's that's something that, at least for me, it caught a lot of my attention. 
Steve Jobs, when he was coming with the iPod, famously said, most people make the mistake of thinking design is what it looks like. People think it's this veneer that the designers are handed this box and told, make it look good. That's not what we think it is, design is. It's not just it looks and feels like, design is how it works. And it's basically that. I mean, in design, you have to not only worry, hey, this looks pretty, this looks good, this looks appealing, but you have to worry on this design actually helps people uh, solve their issues. This design actually makes it easier for them. So it's actually how it works and how uh, it's becoming even easier to do my day-to-day -day task with this software or with this application or solution. Again, the challenge that Cisco gave us during this process was coming up with a minimum viable product that demonstrated our skills, our technical skills in the software uh, development area. Understanding underlying technology that we were unfamiliar with, so we had to discover the APIs and understand the technology while we were developing this solution, and we only had a week to do it. So um, we had a tough challenge. And normally, you could say, okay, the way to do this is just get a couple of engineers, one in the back end, one in the front end, and let's just leave them develop what they need to do, which again, it's not the way that we do stuff at the company. We like to always keep the develop the user experience um, as a priority. And to be honest, if you're leaving the user experience to the developers, you know you're not doing the right job, right? Uh, the developers are great for writing code, for doing front end, for doing back end, but they're not actually, they don't have the experience uh, to actually build a good customer experience or a good user experience. So that's where you have to definitely involve the UI UX designers. Our process links heavily in the, what it's called the Lean UX. It comes from the same agile manufacturing, lean manufacturing, uh, you know, process of thought that came from the Toyota manufacturing process. That, that's where the, all the agile software strategies evolved, or at least got some of the inspiration. And it's the same for Lean UX. So it's not actually going ahead and writing a lot of spec documents. It's trying to solve the problem that we have once we understand more about it. So we have to focus on what we're doing and just start iterating and start improving the experience with, that we're offering uh, to our customers. It needs, the process again during this challenge was a continuous feedback loop. In our case, uh, we had, we were discovering the APIs, the backend engineer was talking to the front end engineer to talk, hey, here's what the API is going to look Here's the, what the API uh, I'm exposing, uh, it's going to look for you, so you can go ahead and work with that. But also talking to the UI UX designer saying, here's the data, here's the information that I'm going to provide to the front end. Go ahead and make the changes, make the designs, or here's the workflow that I think I can set up from the back end. Go ahead and make the design that actually works and improves how customers are doing this. The third part, it was the customer role playing. So again, as this was internal, it's not like we had a customer to actually validate our hypothesis or something like that, but we designated someone from the Altus team that wasn't involved as part of the project developing or designing. He actually was the customer in this decision. So when we were developing something, we were going back to him saying, okay, here's what we have so far. Can you validate? Can you use it? Do you feel that the, the experience could improve? So we had that um, part of our, inter our internal process, that way of actually having an internal person function as the customer. So we were able to validate our hypothesis from the design process and also from the implementation that we're doing with the backend and the front engineers. I'll say that collaboration is the name of the of the game, it was key to the whole process. It was essential, critical to the whole process. We had to collaborate daily, multiple times a day, because the backend engineer was discovering the APIs, understanding the underlying technology, knowing what we could do, 
the front-end engineer was developing the front-end based on the design the design engineer, the UI UX designer was doing. And the UI UX designer had to collaborate very closely with the backend engineer to understand what the API was going to provide to the front-end engineer, what different steps had to be done to actually um, solve the problem that we had, the workflows that we had to solve or the workflows that we have to implement. So he could actually, or she could actually go to implement those workflows in the front end. So again, it was a very collaborative process where we had to focus on the experience and how we could improve that experience for our customers. And finally, it was a continuous improvement process. We probably did within that week, like three or four drafts where we actually implemented the solution, make some changes, some adjustments, figure out that the experience wasn't good enough for our standards and we had to keep iterating over it. So again, lean UX, not trying to write a huge spec document, but trying to solve um, or understand the different hypotheses and the different problems that we had while we were developing. That's why uh, it enabled us to actually create a good experience uh, while we were discovering the API. A continuous feedback loop, we were uh, we were getting feedback from the internal customer or from the back end engineer, the designer, the front end engineer, the customer role playing, which we needed to have that validating of our hypothesis. We didn't stick to our ideas, but we actually have someone external because he was internal to the company, but someone external to the project um, saying or giving us ideas or input if we're, our hypothesis were good or not. Again, continuous collaboration and the continuous improvement with that, within that. Jeff Gottlieb said, and he wrote the book of Lean UX. Lean UX is about bringing the true nature of a product to life faster in a collaborative cross-functional way to reduce the emphasis of photo documentation while increasing the focus on building a shared understanding of the actual product experience being designed. So basically design when you need to design. Let's not try to bring up a huge solution and design something enormous, but let's go collaborating closely with the development team and solving those issues with them when they appear. Again, for the customer role playing, we had that internal validation and have that person being the customer advocate uh, within our process. That collaboration, we had that front end engineer that developed the back, the front end that provide feedback based on the implementation that he was doing and what was possible or not to do from the front end. The UI UX designer, he was able to, or she was able to actually design the UI UX, but also talk to that internal customer, read the um, challenge document and discover those customer needs and discover which workflows we had to solve. The backend engineer worked to discover the API, provide workflow ideas to the UI UX designer and develop that backend. And again, finally, that customer role playing or that internal person doing that as a customer, um, he helped us in validating the design decisions and provide feedback to the UI UX designer on based on the experience that he was having. And finally, as I said, that continuous feedback loop and improvement loop where we could go ahead and understand what we were doing and iterate based on the different drafts that we came up to the solution. My call to action, it's basically what Eric Rice said on the Lean Startup book. What if we found ourselves building something that nobody wanted? In that case, what did it matter if we did it on time and on budget? It's the same here. It is minimal viable product, but it applies the same to every project that we have for the company. It doesn't matter if we build a good solution. It doesn't matter if we uh, actually did it on time and on budget. We have to have a good experience so customers adopt it and so customers are loyal to our brand because we're actually investing in making their lives easier and make it easier for them to work with us or to work with our software. So just as we did, my recommendation is learn about the Lean UX, learn about that collaborative process that you can do with Lean UX and how you can improve your customer experiences using that. That's it for my uh, presentation. I hope that you like it. And thanks for being part of DevNet Creating 2021.